Linda's Pantry. Today I'm going to can some potatoes. It's a really blustery, windy, cold day and that's perfect to go ahead and heat up the house a little bit and get some things done and put away some preps in our extended pantry. So these are going to be Yukon Gold potatoes. In the past I've tried to always get white potatoes. I can't seem to find them anymore. And I'll show you what happened to the russet potatoes I had last time, and that'll give you a good idea of what you would want to do. And those I canned about two years ago. So let's get canning some potatoes. And our uh, information in the About section below, the link of the day would be I've got my Wild Tree website. Go over and check out all natural organic foods, uh, preservative free for your pantry or look into becoming a rep. So let's go can some potatoes. All right, before we get started, I wanted to kind of give you an idea of the last russet potatoes that I did. Um, this is what they look like in the jar. They've kind of gotten a little bit darker in color, but you'll notice around them is a starchy, kind of a gel almost. Did it change the flavor? They didn't smell bad. My seals were all good. Part of it is, I think, because I cubed them so small, um, so I could do, you know, like hash browns or whatever pretty easy. They still have a pretty good firm texture. I'm squeezing pretty hard, and that's a firm texture. So that was good, and I raw packed these. Uh, but I think because there was so, they were so small, it was able to let out all the starch. And so the starch builds up in there. They change a little bit of color, but it does not mean they're bad. These are still okay to eat. Um, we ate the last jar. And it's absolutely, you can rinse that starch off, throw them in soups or stews, nobody will ever know. And so they are really good. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm, my weight water is what I call it. I've got my rinse water after I peel them. I've got my weight water. And these I didn't peel. So these were russets and I did not peel them. And that's the starchiest potato. So I think that was part of it. But we're going to see what happens with these. These are a... Yukon gold, or a yellow gold is what they're calling them. And it's more of a waxy potato, you can tell by the skin. It's not a heavy, thick skin. And so, um, I've got my, after I peel it, I'll rinse it in this water, and then it'll go in here, and I've got some fruit fresh in there. Um, after I cut them up, we'll, they'll go in here. And so, it's just gonna kind of be an assembly line, if that makes sense. Once I get the rinse water filled up, then I'll get my cutting board out and cut them up and put them in here. And then I will comment on you do need salt. I leave salt out of a lot of canning projects, but potatoes is not one of them because you need that flavor. And these are really good. <laughs> mm. And they still have the perfect texture. They're not too soft. And as small as those were, you'd think they'd be mashed potatoes, but they're not. Farm. So I talked to a couple of my girlfriends online, and both of them have canned potatoes. Uh, as well as I have, and um, they were of mixed feelings. One said she'd probably just dehydrate, and that was Paula. Hi, Paula. And Sandy, um, she reassured me that they were okay because I was like, gosh, you know, they tasted okay, but I had never had this happen before. I'd never had that buildup of starch like that and um, them turn that dark. But these were canned two years ago, so um, mm. we're going to go ahead and can some more. And I'm going to eat the rest of those. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get busy. So what we're going to do, pull your sleeves up. Make sure your potatoes are relatively clean. If you need to scrub them first, then do so. These are really nice and clean. So I'm just going to peel them and inspect any bad spots that might be on there. And so as soon as I get, get them peeled, they're going to go in that rinse water and rinse them off, and I don't like that peeler. And uh, then we're gonna go um, cut them into the size pieces I want, which will be bigger than those dices. So look how pretty these are. These are really pretty blemish free. And I bought 15 pounds. It was uh, $8.99, so we'll see how many jars I get and how much it costs. A little can of potatoes can be pretty expensive. I don't really care for the way they taste that well. I like home can better. And so, anyway, there you go. And if, 
It inspires you to stay with me. I hope you do, because uh, it's going to be a great canning project. I love to do canning projects on like blustery spring days that now we've got a bad spot there. And I just take my little eye core thing here on the end of my potato peeler and pop that right out. So there you go. Let's get these in the rinse water and we'll fill that bowl up as soon as it's full. We'll All right, so cutting. as you can see, I've got this bowl full of potatoes peeled and I like to rinse some in there. It just makes for um, just easier to handle and then I know they're clean and see how nice that is. And notice I've got my bowl canning book out. This is the one of the newer ones, but I refer to this no matter how many times I've canned something and I, I implore you to do the same. No matter how many times you've done it, make it a habit to look in that book and refresh your memory again to make sure of your times, your uh, pre pounds of pressure you're gonna need. I know for my altitude, we're pretty high up. I need 15 pounds of pressure. So now I'm gonna get to cutting them up in the cubes that I want. And I'm gonna do bigger cubes this time. I'm gonna do, well, I've done this before, but um, I'm gonna do more like a, a stew kind of size, if that makes sense. So, you know, good, a little over a one inch cube is perfect. And that way they're great for stew. You try to get them as uniform as possible, just like when you're cooking, they'll cook much easier. And then they're all gonna go into this waiting bath of cold water with fruit fresh in it. Just to keep it, now you could use lemon juice if you didn't have fruit fresh. I have fruit fresh that I need to go through and get rid of, and um, that's just what I'm gonna do today. So there you go. And I'll get to key, I'll get to cutting, and then I'm gonna peel some more, and then I'm gonna cut some more, and then when we get them all ready to go, or at least that, waiting bath um, ready to start filling jars. Okay, so we are up. ready to start packing the jars. These jars have been washed in the dishwasher. They're gonna go through a pressure canning process so you don't really have to sterilize them, but they're still warm. Even though the potatoes are cold, I'm raw packing these potatoes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get those in the jar and man down. Pack them in there. You wanna leave after, when you put the water in, you wanna leave about an inch of head space because it's just how it goes. And then I like to take my hand, kind of shake them around a little bit and see I've got more room now. You don't want them too tightly packed, but you definitely want them packed. And then I want, these are pint and a half size jars uh, that I get at, uh, I think everywhere carries them now. A little less than a teaspoon of salt, and I'm using canning salt here. Any unidized salt will do. I'm gonna go ahead and salt my next jar so I don't forget. And then you're going to get some hot water in there and debubble. And so I've got my, uh, this is my kettle that I've got really hot water. You want really nice filtered water if you can Use that, it just keeps it nice and clear. And I go right up to an inch of headspace, and then you're gonna debubble your jar. And I just take a, um, you can use almost anything, just don't use anything metallic. And I've already got more space here to add more water. So we're gonna add more water. Inch of headspace, good to go. Wipe your rim of your jar off, and I always do it with vinegar, whether it's water bath canning or regular canning. That's how I learn, that's how I keep it in check by repeating the same process. And then we wanna put a wide mouth lid on here. And I generally don't give away potatoes, so if I'd have been thinking, I'd have gotten out some Tadler lids. Um, finger tight, and that is when you feel resistance, don't crank it down too far, but just finger tight, because these will loosen up and you need them to be able to release. So isn't that pretty? These are gonna go in the canner and wait, and the canner's warm. It's not super hot, but it is hot. So it'll keep these hot while I process the rest of them. And I'll bring you back and let you know how many I got. I didn't do the whole 15 pounds, but pretty close. I got a pretty good batch. Okay, so this is about how many potatoes I've got left. There's probably 
at least two pounds, maybe two and a half. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and peel and cube up the rest of my potatoes that are in that bag. I'm going to put fill this up with fresh cold water, some more fruit fresh, and it'll stay in the garage refrigerator overnight because it's getting close to starting dinner. After this canning process is done, that's what I'll be doing. So I'm going to do another canning session tomorrow afternoon or maybe even tomorrow morning. And uh, super easy. I mean, this is probably one of the easiest things to do. Um, okay, so now we're going to go over here. And there's my hot water that I filled my jars with. And you can see they're beautiful. So I've got eight one and a half pint jars. And in the ball canning booth, there's not a one and a half pint timing for low acid food. So I always go on the safe side and I go ahead and go the extra five minutes is all it is between a pint and a quart. And I time them like they were a quart. So it's gonna go for 40 minutes. Pints would be 35 minutes and for my altitude, it's 15 pounds of pressure. So you would wanna check your altitude to make sure you know what uh, where you're at and how many pounds of pressure you'll be using and somebody asked me the other day what kind of canner I have this is just an inexpensive presto canner that holds up to seven quarts and I have two of them and I love them and I'd like to have a double decker but as you can see I have a microwave that's a little bit too close you'd have to do that kind of canning out on a turkey cooker um, or pull your stove out you could do that but uh, and my ultimate dream would be to have a uh, all-American canner with the, enough room to can a lot of things at one time. But that being said, let's get the lid on. I've already inspected the lid to make sure that the vent hole is clear, the rubber gasket is fine, all of this rim is fine, and that's hot. And we're going to bring that up, up to a venting steam coming out of the vent hole. At that point, I'm going to time 10 minutes, and once that has steamed out of that vent hole for 10 minutes, I'll put my 15-pound weight on, and when it starts jiggling, then we'll start the timing process at 40 minutes. So, I'll bring you back when something else happens. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay. Our kitchen timer just went off for the venting. So, it's vented for 10 minutes. I'm going to put my handy dandy weight on there and that's for 15 pounds of pressure when that starts doing a dance and jumping up and down singing a tune no um i'll turn my heat down and on my stove i have a gas stove and it runs hot and at least it's immediate you can change it immediately uh, mine goes between a six and a seven on my stove and then i'm gonna start timing at that point the 40 minutes will start but trust me when I tell you, it's hot inside that so camera right now. So 40 minutes has passed. I just turned the burner off, and you can see it starts to settle down really fast. But it will take, oh, well over an hour, I'm sure, for this canner to cool down enough that the stopper in the back goes down and all the pressure is released, enough for me to take the jiggler off and be able to open the lid. So our canners finally come down off of pressure, and let me see, it's taken over an hour, about an hour and 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less. So this pressure valve back there has gone down. It's still extremely hot. I can hear them boiling in there. So you have to be so careful whenever you're doing this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the rocker off. If any steam tried to come out of that when you tried to remove it, it's not ready. So if it starts hissing when you touch that, don't touch that. Let it cool down. Be patient because what will happen is you'll break jars for those of you that are new out there. And this is warm to touch, but it's not super hot. And you're just going to go ahead and you're going to unlock it. Okay. If it had pressure in there, which it doesn't, or that valve would be up it would have blown off of there. You wouldn't have been able to twist it. So you can see though, there's steam coming out of here. So you wanna kind of rocket it away from yourself. And um, there you go. Now you've got this nice hot canner. Ooh, it smells like mashed potatoes. Hmm. And I kind of like to let mine sit in here. I've let this cool down for a little longer than um, than usual, but these are still boiling inside the jars, and look how pretty that is. Now, will they stay that pretty? 
Probably not. They're probably going to turn color a little bit because potatoes, that's what they do. Light and oxygen oxidizes them, but we're going to go ahead and space these out on a couple layers of towels so it's nice and cushioned and leave them alone for until in the morning. I'm not going to touch them. Um, let them come down, um, cool down by themselves, and uh, tomorrow morning I will still take the rings off, wipe everything clean, you know, rinse everything off, mark my jars, date them, to say what kind of potatoes they are, so I kind of can get an idea of whether I like these better than versus red potatoes or um, russets. And I can see some starch actually at the bottom of the jars and that's okay because that can be rinsed away and that's because we did not cook, par cook them so the starch has to go somewhere and um, I don't mind I just if you par cook them for the amount of time that the ball canning book asked for I think they come out really mushy and they break down very quickly and you get mashed potatoes before you want mashed potatoes I just don't want mine to have a little texture so there you go, beautiful. Um, eight one and a half pint jars of canned gold potatoes. And aren't they pretty? Look at them boil. Let's get you a close up. You can see this. Look at those go. And that's a good sign. If they weren't boiling, I'd worry about that jar not sealing correctly. But they're all boiling away. And that's how hot that canner gets. It gets over 240 degrees, which is hot enough. You can't get a water bath canner that hot. Um, but it's hot enough to kill botulism, and any organism isn't going to live through that. So that's why you don't really have to sterilize your jars before you can when you're pressure canning. But I like to wash them through the dishwasher anyway, just because. Just a good habit to be in. So I hope this inspires you to come back. I truly hope it inspires you to stay tuned because here pretty quick, I'm going to use one of these for you. I'm going to do a food storage meal that you guys are going to love and show you fast food my way. So if it does inspire you, I hope you're a subscriber. If not, hit subscribe. And maybe share this on your Facebook page and show everybody what you saw today. All right, guys. God bless.